This is the final part of my video review of the OON SDS7102. As I started to try to use one of the features of the OON, I started running into some problems. Um, the BNC output on the back of the OON is listed as a pass fail out or a trigger out. Um, you can select it in the firmware, which one you want to use. And in the owner's manual for the OON, it says that this trigger out is optically isolated and it's a synchronous trigger out. Um, but actually neither of those two things is true. First of all, you can see right away that uh, the output is not optically isolated by just using a continuity check between the ground on one of the front panel BNCs and the ground here on the back and you'll see that they are connected. So um, it is not optically isolated as OAN claims in the manual. Um, that's less of a problem for me uh, than the fact that it's not really a synchronous trigger. And uh, you, can f you can see that real easily by, uh, I'm taking the trigger out from here and I'll run it into channel two. I now have the trigger output running back into channel two and I'm using alternate triggers so each channel is triggering itself. Um, this is a one megahertz sine wave um, on channel one and then the trigger out on channel two. And now um, when you have a signal coming in that's regular, that's triggering, so that the sweeps are regular, um, the trigger out should actually be um, uh, a factor of the horizontal time base setting. In other words, you should be able to work out the frequency base and the time base setting for every scan that comes across. But in fact, that's not what's happening at all. It's, um, as you can see from the frequency counters here, it's counting right now at uh, about 23 hertz. So it's actually outputting a pulse um, 23 times a second, which is much less than it should be um, in terms of the time base setting. So it is not actually working correctly. Um, if you, if, you, if you look at other scopes that have trigger outs um, as it should be. It does um, work to the extent that if you have um, slow, uh, irregular triggers coming in on channel one, it will output um, a trigger out at the back uh, delayed by one and a half uh, milliseconds or so. Uh, but it does not uh, output a correct synchronous trigger um, if your triggering Im input to channel one is much faster. The other thing I discovered when I started doing this was that I realized um, by doing this that I could actually see what the, the, the screen refresh rates were. You can see the frequency of the trigger out coming back in and that's indicating the screen refresh rate. Um, and as it turns out, that's indicating the waveform capture rate of the OON because it appears the OON works as a traditional DSO in that it captures a wave and writes the screen, captures the ray, a wave, writes the screen. It doesn't do any kind of um, DPO-like processing on the data. So um, you can see very clearly by changing settings, for example, we're using 1K memory depth now, but if I, if I um, change the acquire length to 10 megs, you see now the screen refresh rate has dropped down to something around 14, well it's, it's around 16 and a half hertz right now. So um, going from 1K memory to 10K mem uh, 10 meg memory has dropped the refresh rate from 23 down to about 16, which isn't bad considering um, uh, the factors involved. So you can um, test all kinds of things um, to see how they affect your refresh rate by using this trigger out. For example, if I turn persistence on now, you'll see what happens again to the rate. So I go to one second persistence and the rate has now dropped down to around six and a half hertz. You can see by altering the setting between infinity, five second, two second, one second, it's altering the refresh rate of the display. And in essence, it's altering your waveform capture rate as well, which as it turns out on the Owen, is very slow. Uh, the Owen only captures waveforms and displays and puts them on the display from anywhere between uh, approximately one to 25 per second, which is not a great rate. Um, the one thing I can say about it is that when the 10 meg is enabled, that rate is something between one and uh, perhaps 16, 18 uh, waveform captures a second and that's quite good for that amount of memory. So what they appear to have done with the OON is instead of giving you 
the slow rate when you're using the 10 meg and a much faster rate when you're using 1K or perhaps 10K, they've decided to even it out so that all the rates are not that far apart from each other. You don't notice a massive difference in speed as you would really expect when you go from 1K to 10 meg capture depth. Um, and I understand that was a design decision to make. Um, it's a little bit of a shame. I personally, I think I probably would have decided to keep the O on if they had um, decided to make a very fast waveform or the fastest possible waveform capture rate they could have with the very low memory settings, the um, 1K or the 10K, maybe, maybe just 1K is fine for a fast waveform update and then go on with the slower um, DSO qualities of capturing writing, capturing writing, only when you use the higher memory settings. After I discovered the slow waveform capture rate of the OON, I decided to run some tests to see how that might affect hunting down glitches. So um, I created a, a square wave output that had um, one irregular pulse, one glitch per second. And then I um, used the pass fail function of the hand tech to try to capture that, in, you know, glitch. In, in other words, to make it fail when that glitch happened. Um, so uh, one thing to note is that on the on the OON, it can do about 12 pass fail tests per second. That has to do with the fact that um, uh, it has a larger screen size and, of course, um, the slowness of its waveform capturing. Um, for example, the Rigel can do about 30 per second, but this can only do about 12 per second. So it's it's doing 12 tests per second. At first, I tried to use the 20 microsecond time base setting and I was making sure that I was sampling at one giga samples per second and at that uh, horizontal setting uh, it took it about a hundred minutes to capture the fault, in other words to fail. Um, so it was a glitch that was happening once per second but it took it a hundred minutes to find it. Uh, next I went to the one uh, microsecond time base setting and at that setting it took it eight hours to capture a glitch that was happening once per second. So you can see that the O1 is not a good scope to buy if your main concerns are um, signal f fidelity or hunting and capturing random glitches. Um, uh, it's it's going to have a problem with that. All in all, I think the O1 is a, is a nicely designed, well-built scope. Um, it definitely has that look and feel of a Western product about it, as opposed to some of the cheap Chinese, the other cheap Chinese oscilloscopes that are floating around. Um, but in my opinion, the firmware is still um, underdeveloped or lacking some features that would um, make it uh, more usable. Still, you do get a lot of bang for the buck. and. Uh, I can imagine that there are certain scenarios which would make it worthwhile to purchase the O1. If you absolutely need a cheap DSO with either a VGA out or a trigger out, which um, uh, you can only use the trigger out if your trigger in is happening at a slower rate than um, the refresh rate of the display. Um, but in either of those cases, if you need a cheap DSO with one of those two things, uh, the OON is really the only one around, as far as I know, that has those. So if one of those things is absolutely a necessity for you and you don't have much money to spend, um, the OON's worth getting. Uh, a second reason you might get it is if you need a cheap DSO that's battery operated but has a large screen. Again, the OAN, as far as I know, is the only one in that class um, uh, with, with that ability. The third reason you might uh, go for the OAN is if you need a cheap DSO that has very deep memory. It has 10 uh, mega points of memory per channel. Um, so if you need a, a cheap DSO that, uh, for, for example, for single shot um, waveform inspection, again, the OAN is the only, um, the only game in town. Uh, the th last reason why I can imagine that uh, you might buy an OAN um, is if you need a, a quick cheap DSO, but you are planning to upgrade later and get a more expensive one, such as uh, the GW Instec or one of the Agilent, um, it might make sense to buy the OAN now and then later, once you have the, your, your nicer, faster um, bench scope that you can use, uh, you can keep using the OAN uh, as a portable with the battery um, for uh, field work.